friends and family. How are you wonderful, beautiful people doing today? As promised from the last video, we're gonna do an update on all of our reticulated pythons, and we're gonna start from biggest to smallest. All right, you turn your feeding response off. Feeding response off. <gasps> Comment down below if you remember the segment we used to do called Snakes in the Grass. I basically just get some cool B-roll style footage of different snakes of mine crawling around outside in the grass, put it to this soundtrack and just do that. And I love doing those. So just kind of reminisce back on that. I love taking snakes outside. Fortunately, we are here in beautiful sunny February of California. It's gorgeous out here. So this is Betsy Ross. Betsy Ross is our largest reticulated python purple albino female. This girl has actually been held by more kids than any other snake in this room. When we do the educational shows, kids are always asking to hold animals because we definitely let kids hold animals as part of the show. It's the best part of the show, in my opinion, to get that hands-on experience. A big group, you know, when I'm calling people up to hold an animal, you're not gonna get through the whole group over the course of the show. So I always promise the entire group, and whether it's 20 kids or 120 kids, or even 500 kids, I always promise everyone that if you want to, you will get a chance to touch an animal. So not to be bummed if I'm not calling on you throughout the show because everyone will get the chance. And that chance is Betsy Ross. She's got me pretty good by my foot right now. Uh, she is the one that I have kids line up and she just crawls through their arms and we have line up as many kids as there are that want to touch an animal and she crawls through them and we have, we have fun, don't we? Don't we Betsy Ross? Named Betsy Ross, of course, actually, Leave a comment down below if you know why she's called Betsy Ross, because I've talked about it plenty of times. UPS driver just got here. I think maybe we're gonna get a little hands-on experience with the snake right now. How about that? You wanna hold her? No, I'm a little scared of that. I know it's, it's harmless, but. Yeah, I mean, you could. I, I, I could help you out. I could help get her up, and then it's, it's a really cool thing to feel the power. I can jump up there and like. No, I gotta get going. Put it on your shoulder. I see so many cool animals on routes, so. Yeah, that's probably a first. First snake for sure. <laughs> well, I've seen a lot of snakes in the wild, but not like. Yeah, not this, not this big. I not see like rattlers here. and stuff. I'm like, not going near you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a smart move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. My name's Darren, by the way. Brian. Right on, bro. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, man. On, well, he didn't, he didn't want to hold her, but still, I've, I can appreciate that he could appreciate the beauty of a snake. That was cool. Totally unplanned. Glad I was here for my UPS package to arrive because I needed to sign for that one. Oh, oh, full body wrap. See, Darren, this is what I wanted you to experience, man. The full body wrap. Feel the power. It's nice. Oh, all right, next snake is Halo, who is unfortunately deep in shed, which is anytime we're showing off a snake, we can almost guarantee at least one of them's gonna be. Whoa, deep in shed and sliding out of my hands to go the opposite direction. <laughs> One of the interesting things about all the snakes I'm about to show you is that they've all been on the same feeding schedule for years. Size appropriate meals. So as some grew, they started getting bigger sizes, but as some didn't grow as fast, proportionately sized meals to their body size. So it's just been interesting to see the wide variety in growth. And I think you guys would be pretty blown away to see how really small this last snake is. It's kind of mind boggling. One thing about filming with the phone is it does a really good job in this dappled light. Like you got shadows and bright sunlight and it like picks up both of them really well. Pretty Comment down below if you know why Halo is named Halo. So Beatrice here is our third largest reticulated python. Didn't mention the Halo if you didn't know is a lavender motley tiger. And Beatrice here is a mochino. And she is actually in shed too, though she's not in blue anymore. She's finished uh, that chemical layer between the old layer of skin and the new layer of skin. And so she's clear again, but she hasn't shed off that skin yet. So if we're lucky, while she's crawling around, she'll shed it off for us, but I doubt it. <laughs> she really is a very gorgeous animal. She's arguably one of the most beautiful reticulated pythons we have. In fact, if you want to comment down below which one's your favorite as far as look, uh, please comment down, down below. I'd be curious to see how many would agree that the Mochino here is the best looking. Patsy LaRue here, a little twitchy. This is actually one of the only 
retics I have that ever gave me a feeding response bite a long time ago, back when it, it still hurt, but it wasn't nearly as bad as if she would give me one right now. Um, and again, same feeding schedule, but just stayed smaller than the other mainlands. And she's a Phantom Sunfire, het purple. Give me a nice body wrap. Hey, you know these retics? I had initially got them intending to breed them, but decided uh, I'm not going to. And you know, that's kind of, I guess, a testament to my true love for snakes. Is like I just keep them. And they're not <laughs> necessarily inexpensive to feed, and we just do that. And this is a slightly dangerous position for me, but excuse me. But I do have her only on, as you see, she's just got both her coils on one side of my neck, which is what I always tell people. You don't want both sides of your neck to be closed off. And she's not so strong that I couldn't unwrap her tail. She's, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a super powerful snake. And if you didn't have strength, I've got pretty decent tensile strength for the person I am. So I could, here, I'll just show you what I would do. I mean, if she really want to try to kill me, maybe she could do it, but just grab at the tail and start unwrapping like that. And then pretty much just comes right off. And I've got, she's got my arm pinned right now, but again, she's just using me as a tree right now. So it's not a, not a huge deal. She's not going into like feeding response mode or anything like that. Just, but you know, you just gotta kind of use your common sense when you're working with these animals and know them, know their temperaments, know what's to expect from them. And they can know what to expect from you and my arm is pinned. <laughs> but that's because I'm holding the camera. It's fun though. I kind of like it. It's really cool. Actually, this is one of the things I love about a big snake like this. You can't get this feeling with other snakes that are smaller. Like this whole, this snake is actually like holding me right now instead of me holding it, which is, it's just a cool feeling, man. I really wish my UPS driver would have been open to trying it out because I think he would have been, would have changed his life a little bit. But you know what? I don't think that'll be the last time I see that guy. So. We'll get there. Moving on. Junior, the Motley Golden Child. Much smaller. I mean, he's a male, so that really has a lot to do with the size difference. It's not just the feeding. Definitely more manageable, but probably the most beautiful because of how dark he is when it comes to sunlight. Look at this. Yeah, just an absolutely stunning snake. He's actually kind of in shed right now too. We're going into shed, so he's not as brilliant as he usually is, which is crazy. And this snake, of course, Junior had a famous run in with my daughter a little feed and response thing where she had been holding chickens and uh, she got over pretty quickly fortunately but oh junior he still has that eye issue from time to time you know took him to the vet and paid thousands of dollars to end up removing one of his uh salivary glands because it became a secondary thing and now when his eye does this it, it goes back down on its own so it just kind of goes up it goes down it goes up and i i kind of learned a hard lesson of, of just kind of letting that happen and just let it go and just it doesn't cause him any real major issues it doesn't seem you know, sometimes it's a little up but usually it swells back down and if i don't mess with it it just kind of does its thing but i'm not trying to spend thousands and thousands of dollars at a vet again just to have the same thing keep happening so love getting these snakes out in the sunlight man it's just the best do it you guys ever see that video of that guy like taking his snake for a walk, <laughs> going through the mall and stuff? That video was hilarious. This is Shetty Spaghetti. Surprisingly, not the smallest snake that you're gonna see. Well, uh, maybe he's a little smaller. Uh, so, wow, look at that iridescence. Super dwarf, unfortunately deep in shed. Goat line, reach out reptiles, gift from my lovely buddy Garrett over there. And uh, Shetty Spaghetti is awesome. Maybe actually the smallest snake here, but not by much. You're gonna be surprised when you see this other snake. Look at those eyes, so deep in shed. It's still nice iridescence even though he's so deep in shed. Well, that timing is what it is. We were getting a lot of rain here in California, which is fantastic. But, uh, you know, snakes aren't on time with their skin. But sunshine's doing them justice, I think, nonetheless. So this last snake here, actually now holding him, he is a bit smaller than Shetty Spaghetti, but he's much older. And he's not necessarily even a super dwarf. He's just uh, a retic that was born without functioning eyes. In fact, he's kind of grown in what kind of appear to be eyes, but they're not functioning. He, when, he, when he first hatched out, he didn't really have anything that you could tell was eyes. And he's, I use him as a, uh, I guess a kind of a show thing for the kids to understand heat pits and how they work and the fact that this snake can still see 
in a form, even though it can't see like the difference between the light that we see uh, with eyes and uses heat pits to see the heat signatures. Um, also in shed, <laughs> but also just really crazy. I don't know if there's just like the defect there and the, the runtiness, the natural runtiness of this snake, but the snake just never got any bigger than this, which is kind of cool for educational purposes because it's not a big snake to lug along, um, just kind of a smaller snake to carry in one hand. Um, easy for the kids to hold and, and learn about those heat pits, but pretty trippy. Pretty trippy how small he stayed. RC is his name, stands for Retinally Challenged. Anyway, that's all the retics that we currently keep. And there's your update on them. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any kind of particular video you'd like me to make. Uh, I'd be happy to make it. And in the meantime, y'all take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha.